Today on the Mr. Maple Podcast, Matt and Tim check off those boxes on the Japanese Maple Fall Care Checklist. y'all and welcome to those crazy brothers who talk about Japanese maples every single week. You're on the Mr. Maple Show podcast. Today we're going to be breaking down that fall checklist. So I'm Matt. And I'm Tim. And we're MrMaple.com. We love Japanese maples. You probably do too if you're listening to this uh, podcast. So make sure you give us a five-star rating on your favorite podcast platform. Find us on YouTube too. We do a daily YouTube show. It's the Mr. Maple Show on YouTube as well. Go check that out. And guys, if we're blessing you with all kinds of maple info and you're a loyal customer, feel free to go to Google and give us a five-star review there, too. We really appreciate those. We're getting into it today with a lot of information to help you all this fall. So basically, it's fall, y'all, and let's get into what you need to be doing to prepare your trees to have the best success for fall. Now, there's a lot of do's and a lot of don'ts to fall gardening. There's one big do and a whole bunch of don'ts, to be honest with you, because fall is one of the best times to plant a Japanese maple. Yeah, fall is for planting. Now, you can plant a Japanese maple any time of the year, but fall is one of the easiest times because Japanese maples are so forgiving during this time of the season. Japanese maples, you can put them out in the fall, and you don't have to water them as frequently as you would during the summer or as the spring. And with the Japanese maples during the fall, you're not going to be getting that harsh summer sun hitting them in the next season. And so fall is an excellent time for planting Japanese maples. Yeah, now this is the easiest time. I always tell people that, you know, everybody does too much getting into winter. You've probably listened to our winter checklist, and nine times out of ten, people with that are new to Japanese maples are overdoing it in this fall season preparing. And I tell people, if you're that worried, just plant your trees. Plant them. Get them out of the nursery containers. Get them in the ground. They're going to work zones five through nine in the ground, and they're going to winter better. They're going to go through fall and give you, you know, better growth, better happiness in the fall. You're going to prepare it for the winter better by getting in the ground in the fall. If you absolutely don't want to plant your Japanese maples, another alternative is just to plant the container. So you can plant that nursery one gallon in the ground, in the pot, with plans to move it next spring. So it's a great way to go ahead and give yourself some temporary insulation for winter by fall planting the actual container in the ground. Now, we can get into a lot about how to plant Japanese maples. We'll definitely be doing some instructional videos on exactly breaking down how to plant. But fall is the ideal time to plant in most areas, especially zone six through nine. I highly recommend fall. You can plant any time of the year when the ground's not frozen. But fall is one of the most forgiving. Fall allows you to get the tree in there with no transpiration, to get some roots on and get it established and so that it takes off in the spring, happy and healthy. And I do encourage people to plant one gallons. A lot of people have this like a little bit of over nervousness with one gallons. We sell a lot of one gallon trees and they'll say, I'm going to hold all my one gallons and plant them next spring. That way I don't have to put them in the ground. Opposite of really where you should be uh, approaching this, like go ahead and get those one gallons on the ground now they'll be taken off in the spring. So they're much easier to winter in the ground and fall is for planting. Just don't forget that. That's the biggest thing about fall. It's the easiest time to plant a Japanese maple and have good success. Now it can be done any time of the year, but that's the easiest. Now there's a lot of different theories behind planting Japanese maples. One of the easiest and the most important factors is making sure you dig the hole a little bit wider than the pot, typically about one and a half times the width of the actual container but not much deeper. It's actually better to have that plant slightly raised. Japanese maples love good drainage. And if you give them good drainage, they're, you're going to have successful planting with a Japanese maple. I mean, if you take that same Japanese maple and you plant it too deep, you're going to have a tree that can struggle, uh, that will struggle out there in the landscape. By taking your Japanese maple, planting it a little bit higher, you're going to have really good success. And there's a lot of different theories behind how to plant, and, and there's different soil types. But the main key factor is good drainage. Yeah, and if you're playing along at home, don't drink every time Tim says Japanese maple. We highly discourage that. You'll be knocked out about 10 seconds into this podcast. We say Japanese maples a lot, but it's a Japanese maple podcast. Guys, we typically recommend digging the hole about 
uh, one and a half times bigger than the, the size root ball you're planting. You could be planting ones, you could be planting 10 gallon Japanese maples. This is a good metric for giving you some loose soil that's broke up around the tree. Don't be fertilizing this time of the year. Don't add extra fertilizer. You're okay to dump any of the fertilizer that's already been slow releasing all year off the container into the hole. That's fine, but don't be using new fertilizer at this point. You want the trees to shut down completely, so there's no reason to be, uh, you know, giving them any reason to be waking back up. Now, the reason we actually say dig a little bit wider, Japanese maple roots, when they're getting established, like to have soil that's not compacted. And what you're doing is you're loosening up that soil so those roots can get out there and get established a little bit quicker. And if you do that, you're going to have a really good success, especially this time of the season, for them to put out roots and be ready for the spring. Now, the number one thing uh, to, to factor in, there's two things, really. The two, the two biggest factors when you're planting your Japanese maple, one, you want to make sure it's not in a boggy area. We, we, we beat this like a dead horse, but Japanese maples will not grow in a boggy area. People mess with me all the time. They say, what Japanese maple do you recommend for this wet spot in my garden? And it, it, it's a dead one. That's what's going to happen if you plant a Japanese maple in a wet spot in your garden. It's it's going to be that that dead one is what it's going to be because they will not go in a wet spot. So make sure it's an area with good drainage. And then the second thing there is make sure not to plant it too deep. And that also goes along with drainage. But it's going to allow that tree, uh, you know, to not have to reroot. You don't want to be burying the graft union. You don't want to be putting mulch up against the base of the tree too deeply. Planting one too deep just sets it up for failure because it tries to reroot. And you're basically having to root your tree all over again. So it's it's not a it's not a good way for Japanese maples to be growing. You know, so be looking for that spot in your garden for the fall that has good drainage, but also allows you to elevate your tree slightly in the hole. Uh, we like to, to even elevate it a little bit more because they will settle as they get established. Now, not only is this a good time for your trees for you to plant during the fall, but it's also a good time for you. I mean, the fall weather's here. Right. We, we've got some cooler weather here and, you know, you can feel it in the air. And that's always an excellent time to get out there and work in your garden. You're not going to get dehydrated during that time. Make sure you keep drink plenty of water either way. But, I mean, it's going to be cooler on you. And you're going to enjoy the gardening and going out there and planting your Japanese maples during this time of the season. Now, planting your trees during this time of the year, really almost any trees besides Japanese maples, it's the ideal time to be planting. So that's one of the major do's. Guys, there's a ton of don'ts on this checklist. So, you know, you really want to be thinking about preparing for winter a lot of a lot of what you're doing in your fall japanese maple garden is setting yourself up for success the rest of the year and so it's a great time to be planning but you don't want to be doing things that are going to be issues for yourself later in the winter now a lot of people go way too far in their winter prep even in zone five you really only need to be covering your trees during extreme changes you don't want to be putting things like burlap or uh, tarps over your Japanese maples going into fall to prepare for winter. I see a lot of that. People will send me pictures and they'll say, but why not? <laughs> it's because you're going to be doing more harm than good. So we're approaching fall right now. It's just about early fall. And, you know, later on in this fall, you're going to be having leaves drop everywhere. I mean, leaves are dro will be dropping everywhere and people will go around and they'll collect all their leaves and they'll just start dumping them on top of their Japanese maples. And often they overdo it with the, the leaves that they put around their Japanese maples. Right. You'll see some of these oak leaves and pine needles and things like that that are um, they're accumulating and they're getting a good, you know, there is some nutritional value to leaves. So if you're grinding up your leaves, there's a lot of nutritional value in a forest from those leaf dander. But what you got to be careful to do is to not overdo it and be burying the tree. Uh, I've seen people, you know, at Halloween dumping bags of, of their of their leaves all around their Japanese maples to the point where they're burying the base. And what they're creating is a habitat that all those insects are swarming to. So everything's like, this looks like a perfect place to lay eggs. You know, so try to be cautious of that. The, the insects are going dormant or they're going into hibernation during this time of the year. They're looking for places to reproduce for next year. They're looking for places uh, that they can, they can basically winter. Don't create habitats that are going to be advantageous to insects during this time. So you can big a big if you have a big old pile of leaves, put them out there and let your four or five year old run go jump in them. Don't don't pile all of them over top of your Japanese maple. Not only will it create a space for insects and fungus to start developing during the late fall, winter months, what you're going to end up having is over time that leaf dander and leaf litter is going to decompose and it's going to create soil. And you may actually start burying your Japanese maple if this becomes a habit, and plant. And it'll basically be like you planted your Japanese maple too deep and you start to create that you know that volcano of death but with leaves oh for sure now uh, again a little bit of leaf dander can be good it can be nutritional just always keep it to a minimum you don't you want to make sure you're not raising that soil level 
and and you're not creating you know the hotel that is amazing for all insects to to come and vacation at all winter in your garden so going along with that line of thinking another big don't is something that people always recommend for fall like one time i was in a gardening magazine and they put a quote beside my head that I did not say. They, it was Better Home and Gardens, and they had my picture, and then it said, fall is for pruning. Opposite of my opinion. I, I recommend people pruning in mid to late March. Avoid fall pruning. It's going to open you up to insects and other issues. You'll see so many gardening things recommend pruning in fall, and I couldn't disagree more. Yeah, pruning with Japanese maples, when you prune, it promotes growth. And it promotes the plant being active. And that's the exact opposite of what we want to do with a Japanese maple going into fall and going into winter. If you're pruning in the fall, that plant is going to start pushing sap. It's going to start uh, thinking about trying to grow again. And it's going to be real active with the roots, trying to heal. Well, that's, that's going to be a problem going into those winter months. In those winter months, you want the plant shut down as best as you can. And that's the exact opposite of what you're doing when you're in pruning. Because pruning whether people realize or not, actually encourages more new growth. Yeah, we, we talk about this quote all the time, but people know Buddy Lee. He did the Encore Azalea. They trust him. So it's like, it's always a good verification backup for somebody. It's like, I don't know if I believe these young whippersnappers here. So he always says that you only want to prune in times that you can fer fertilize on woody ornamentals. And I think it's great advice, especially for Japanese maples and azaleas. So it fits very well. When you're pruning it, it is going to activate it. Now, also, they're going to take a lot longer to heal during this time. If you're pruning during the fall, those wounds are going to stay open for much longer, sometimes upwards of a month before those are even healing. That's going to create open sores on your tree that are going to attract insects. The insects are looking for places to go. They're looking for food during this time as the food's decreased. You're going to be basically making a beacon to all the, the insects that are looking to winter uh, in your garden when you're pruning during this time of the year. Pruned in mid to late March. Things are still dormant. Your trees are just leafing out. You'll encourage growth in your tree. You'll create a better xylem flow in your tree. Pruned during the fall does tend to decrease the overall size of the tree, but it also tends to cause a lot more long-term damages because they don't heal well. So you can get way more than you bargained for by pruning because you might get way more than just what you pruned dying off on the tree. I mean, if a plant is pruned during the winter months or the, in the fall and you've got a plant trying to go through all these cold stresses and also trying to heal at the same time, you're going to be encouraging all types of pests. So you might have deers come by and forage on your Japanese maples. You might have a lot of other things happen because your plant is throwing out stress. And when your plant says, I'm stressed, bugs and animals attack. And so keep that in mind. You don't want to be pruning that encourages growth. On that same line of thinking, you don't want to be fertilizing in the fall as well. Some people will often say, hey, give it a light or give it a fertilizer to help it get established during the winter. If you have that tree active during the winter months by fertilizing it in the fall, you're going to get a tree that has split bark because it, it can actually freeze and bust the sap in the tree and cause a lot of long-term issues and might even kill your Japanese maple. There's a lot of bad information out there on fall fertilization. A lot of people encourage it. A lot of people put heavy amounts of nitrogen in the hole when planting in the fall. I, I definitely don't encourage it, especially in those zone five, zone sixes. You're getting too cold in the winter for your tree to be active. And you're playing with fire even in zone seven, zone eight, and zone nine, because one cold snap could really cause irreparable damage to your tree after getting it active. We actually fertilize here at our nursery up until May with granulated fertilizers. We cut all of our fertilizers off after May so that our tree shut down going into fall. We're in Western North Carolina here in zone 6B. We're very close to Asheville. We're actually in an area, uh, East Flat Rock, which is next to Hendersonville, North Carolina. It's not uncommon for us in October to get into the 20s in mid to late October. I mean, there's a lot of times pre-Halloween, we might hit upper 20s or lower 20s. We don't want our trees active during this time. We don't want them pushing growth. Uh, all that growth is subject to get burned off or just die out. And you'll have a whole lost year of new growth because those tips got burned uh, because they were way too active going into that, that dormancy period. Now, uh, basically with fertilizers, do it early and then cut it off. A lot of times, even late in the season, trees will drop leaf. And it's okay earlier in the season, say like your tree dropped leaf. And one of the good things about Japanese maples are 
they give us these warning signs. So one of the first lines of defense when a Japanese maple gets stressed are they drop their leaves. You know, conifers don't do that. When they drop the needles, it's go time. They're done, right? So like there's no real turnaround there. But Japanese maples, they'll kind of give you a couple hints things aren't going right. And one of the biggest hints is dropping leaf. Now, when your younger trees especially drop leaf early this time of the year, I don't recommend pushing them back into leaf. There's really no reason. We're at a stage right now where you want to let them go dormant. Early dormancy is not uncommon, especially in younger trees. Juvenile, one gallons, two gallons, even three gallons, especially if they're still in the containers, are expected to drop leaf before the tree's in the ground. A lot of the, the fall color and going dormant is based off root temperatures, and they're going to reach those far faster than things in the ground. Now, one thing to keep in mind, too, is if you see a Japanese maple that doesn't have leaves on it this time of the season, one, make sure that the tree itself isn't holding water in the area because if it's holding water in the area that can kill the Japanese maple during the winter months but if it's not that and the tree has a healthy buds and a healthy bark then what you have is a Japanese maple that will leaf out in the spring and look fine like the rest of them but it may have went through some sort of stress during the summer or early fall and when that happens early in the season a tree may drop leaves but it's still a healthy tree the leaves as Matt was talking about are indicators of what is actually going on but the health of the tree is in the bark and the buds. And Japanese maples are so forgiving this time of the season in the fall because they already have their buds set for the following spring. Yeah, so just let those buds, if you've got buds formed and there's healthy, happy buds and your tree isn't crunchy, you got nothing to worry about. Let that tree go dormant. If you've already dropped leaf and you're in containers, man, go ahead and plant them. You got nothing to lose. They're not going to drop leaf again. Uh, I have people that are like, well, my tree dropped leaf, so I want to wait to plant it. No, you're already, you're already dropped leaf, man. Go ahead and get that thing in the ground. Nothing's going to happen. You've already got healthy buds. You're going to not stress the tree from transpiration. It's go time. It's already ready. Uh, so be conscious of that. Now, know that also juvenile young trees may skip fall color completely. So it's not uncommon, especially on unestablished trees or first-year trees in the ground, to have kind of lackluster fall color. A lot of times fall color looks kind of brown when you first get a tree in the ground. So know that that is typical and normal. Doesn't mean your tree's dead. Doesn't mean it died. If you've got those healthy buds below those brown leaves, that's pretty common. They're not taking up water as efficiently as they will once they're more established in that same spot or in the container. Uh, it's not uncommon here at our nursery for us to have trees in the same greenhouse on the same watering system, you know, essentially getting the same amount of care, the same amount of water, and some of the trees in the greenhouse completely drop leaf early, while some haven't even started fall color yet. And when a tree starts really going to that stage in the fall where it's preparing itself for fall color, I mean, that is the time when it's the easiest for the tree to drop leaves early. And that's why younger plants, you know, might not show the fall color that the, an established tree out in the specimen, out in the landscape, would display. But Japanese maples, they've got a lot of different factors for fall color. And some of them are water. You want to make sure that it gets wet and then dries out. If you have a plant that's holding water more, it's going to drop its leaves early. It's not going to show as good of a fall color as the ones that are allowed to get wet and dry out. The other thing that's going to affect the fall color of a Japanese maple that we've learned is the timing of the day. So literally, the t how short the days are can actually affect a Japanese maple's fall color and can even start the whole fall color process for certain species. Now, know your area. Like, uh, it's not uncommon for uh, trees at Stephen F. Austin in Texas to not get into fall color, I mean, until Christmas. They, they, had, they had an amazing display around New Year's last year of fall color. So, know your area a little bit. Know when you're going dormant. Uh, it, it can be a factor, especially if you're getting trees shipped in. We're in western North Carolina. We're typically starting to drop leaf in October. So, some things are in fall color. Some things are starting to drop leaf by the end of October. By about the second or third week in November, we're typically almost out of leaf here. Now, I've had seasons where we had foliage almost up to December, but it's rare. So, th there are factors there that, that will make your tree drop leaf early. Now, if you're shipping trees from us to you, know that a lot of times these trees may have already went started to go dormant and drop leaf. So a little bit of drying out, even in shipment, will make them go ahead and drop leaf pre-fall color. And that's pretty common. It's not, doesn't mean you have an unhealthy tree. Uh, it just means you have a young tree. Uh, and so you'll see that a good bit. We'll actually start to add notes here in the next few weeks that say, hey, in shipment, younger trees will drop leaf early. I know it startles some people when they open a box and they've got a box full of foliage. You know, the tree left in a little bit of fall color and it didn't take much for it to go ahead and drop it all. It always finds me comical. It, it always gives me comedy whenever I look at sometimes when where we send Japanese maples, 
One time we sent a Japanese maple and it was in January to someone who was putting it in Disney World and it was out of leaf because we're in West North Carolina in January. They were completely oblivious to deciduous trees. But they thought it was dead because it didn't have any leaves on it. So just know that when you're getting your Japanese maple in the fall, if it's dropped its leaves, it's still a healthy tree. It just went to dormancy a little bit earlier. You know, January is a normal time right. for, for it to be dormant. The landscaper who's putting in the display at Disney World said, Disney's going to be mad at you. And we're like, the tree doesn't have leaves. We're in Western North Carolina. <laughs> we're like 20 degrees here right now, man. It's February. So so know the area your tree's coming from. Know where you're at. Uh, those can all be factors. You know, oddly enough, another funny story is I had a guy one time in Columbia. He had bought a Hogyo Koo from us. And uh, the tree was about the color of my hat right now. So it was neon orange, which is what Hogyo Koo does at its absolute peak. And this gentleman called me and I answered the phone. This was back when pre-Jody days when I answered all the phone calls. And the guy was in tears. He was just absolutely in tears. And I'm, I'm like, what's wrong? And he's like, well, I bought this Hogyo Koo from you at the farmer's market here in Columbia back you know, in the springtime. And it was a beautiful green. And I don't know what I'm doing wrong. The thing is neon orange. And I'm like, is this is this a joke? And the guy's is crying. The guy's yeah, crying. The guy's literally sobbing. I'm like, is this a prank? Is, is this another nursery that I know? Are you screwing with me? Like, who is this? And, and so I realized the gentleman, you know, he just wasn't familiar with the idea of deciduous trees and fall color. Japanese maple is what makes them famous is that fall color. I mean, the spring colors are incredible too, but a lot of people look for Japanese maples for this incredible fall display. And I talked him into, like, this is going to happen every year right before they drop leaf and so i was ready for it really to go bad when i said that and uh, by the end of our conversation he said you know this fall color is kind of pretty i think i could i think i could learn to look forward to this each year <laughs> and so yeah like welcome to japanese maples buddy they, they can be they can be ever-changing beauties now they are going to go dormant so that's something to be prepared for that fall color it catches some people off guard especially in warmer places that aren't used to deciduous trees uh, so, so surprised. Deciduous means they drop all their leaves when they're through with the fall color. And fall color isn't a bad thing. Don't be afraid uh, that during this time of the year, you're getting some frost. Things are getting colder. It's October. You know, I have people call up the nursery and they say, uh, it's, you know, October 25th and we're getting a frost next week. What should I do? Enjoy it. Like that, that's normal. Your trees, the trees need that. They're going to shut down better. A couple frost is awesome because you're starting to, to harden off those stems. You're starting to get that leaf to harden off a little bit. Uh, frost and cold weather, you know, as long as it's not out of nowhere and it's all of a sudden after a warm spell, there's nothing to worry about about that. It's completely natural going into fall. You worry about frost and freezes going into sp and spring once the tree's juvenile with new growth and fresh and just leafing out. You really don't have to worry about these, these colder temps. As long as they're gradual. Now, you don't want like, you know, we've been 80 all of a sudden and now we're 12 tomorrow. Like that, that might cause concern if you're doing that. But as long as you're going through a natural progression of colder temperatures, oh man, that's exactly what you want. Now, if you've been over fertilizing and fertilizing too late in the season, you know, you might have to be worried about early frost and you might have to protect. Please don't fertilize your Japanese maples later in the season. And that fixes all the problems. But I, that's one of the things I love about Japanese maples is that reset button that you get with a Japanese maple. With conifers, you don't get that. Mm -hmm. With a conifer, it starts looking bad, then you have to figure out and live with it looking bad until you can try to make it start looking good again. With a Japanese maple, it goes to fall color or it drops its leaves early in the springtime, it's already hit the reset button, and your Japanese maple is looking pretty again. Those and conifer people have no patience. <laughs> you got it. It's that anticipation of spring. I think there's something beautiful about that, honestly, though. With Japanese maples, you literally get every single season. And then once they drop leaf, you have that, that like, anticipation and dream of the spring garden. I think there's something magical about that, to be honest with you. I think that's, like, one of the, the most fun things. You have this distinctly different seasons, spring color, summer, and fall. You get through this amazing fall. It's like, wow, everything was outstanding. And now, now the wait's on, right? Now, now you set, you're setting the, the gardeners are setting those calendars for, you know, that early springtime, and it's all it's all anticipation until then. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing I love about it too, because if you're new into Japanese maples, and you know you miss some waterings on your Japanese maple, a newly planted tree, or miss some watering and you went on a vacation and your tree was in a container, it dried out too much. If you got healthy buds and you've got a healthy tree. Next spring, guess what? Game's on. You've got the gorgeous tree that you had the spring before. So an amazing time 
fall, it's that beginning of the reset button, but it's also a time that as your plants get established, you can appreciate more and more that, that gorgeous fall color. Now, guys, a big factor in this and something that happens naturally during this time of the year, mostly in our area, I know some areas kick up the water, but it's decreasing the amount of water. So as you get from those summer months where you may have had more rain into the fall, you're going to be decreasing amounts of water pretty naturally most times. Typically, our best fall color comes when we have a little bit of rain early and then it kind of dries out a little bit in October. That's kind of the ideal situation. You get a little bit of that late September uh you know, gets the trees ready for it, and then you kind of gradually cool off and get cooler and cooler. The more the more gradual the process is, it seems like the more dramatic you get. But I mean, like I said, Stephen F. Austin had knock your socks off colors. So it's not that you can't have great fall colors in hotter areas. You just need to prepare your trees for it. Now, for us in Western North Carolina, if you're following the fall color, Western Carolina University often puts up the fall color predictions for the mountains of Western North Carolina. This year, and specifically, it says that it's going to be toward the best fall color is going to be in the end of October to early November. But that can actually be different in our cold frames. And our cold frames, you know, they actually heat up at different times and they get different amounts of sunlight than the typical tree outdoors because we do have them under 55% white poly. And that means fall color can start earlier or sometimes can hold later, much later into the year. So sometimes we might have trees in a cold frame in fall color in later November when most of the trees on the mountaintops were in fall color in the early November time frame. Now, especially in containers, those water and temperature times can vary a ton. So don't be afraid of brown leaves during this time of the year. As long as you have healthy buds, especially juvenile plants, you're going to get some brown foliage that didn't mature into fall color. It's just inevitable. Uh, it doesn't mean your tree's damaged. doesn't mean it's diseased. I'll have people say, my tree, my tamukiyama just went brown this year. Sometimes you have that. You want to stay less active. We have a whole video on what is marquescence, and we talk about when you get that weird early cold snap when the trees haven't shut down yet, and they hold their foliage all winter. I heavily encourage you to go watch that video on YouTube. Uh, it's got a great explanation, and we bring in Dr. Creech from Stephen F. Austin as well to kind of talk about what marquescence is. And that really happens when, say you're typically like in that mid, say you're around October 15th, and your trees have got started into fall color. You know, they're, they're shutting down, but they're not really hitting fall color yet. They're kind of green. And then we randomly get like 20. And what that causes is a lot of the trees will keep all their foliage on, They'll say, hey, man, it's going to be a bad winter. We better keep everything we can intact. It's going to be cold. It, it hit us early. And this doesn't hurt the tree in any way. In fact, I encourage people not to trim off uh, the foliage. Just let it fall off naturally. Uh, definitely don't break it off. If you absolutely have to, trimming it is better than breaking it. Leaving those petioles uh, below, uh, you know, encapsulated and not damaged for winter. Um, the tree is basically preparing itself to have as much insulation as possible. You'll see some seasons here in western North Carolina, you get a ton of marquescence in late, late fall. Again, doesn't affect the tree at all. It's, it's a perfectly natural situation going on there. But uh, just be prepared for that and know what it looks like. If you have brown trees, as long as you have a healthy tree with healthy buds going on, you're perfectly fine for the winter. One thing to keep in mind about Japanese maples in the fall is that Japanese maples require not a lot of care and not a lot of fertilizer, but don't overdo it by taking care of other plants you may have near your Japanese maples. If you're planting mums all around your garden you know if you're trying to keep those alive you may be overwatering your japanese maple so be careful and keep in, keep that in mind yeah i mean those are going to be requiring nitrogen different take you're going to be watering mums like crazy i mean a lot of mums come are coming out of greenhouses where they're getting water from below a lot of those are getting saturated so you're having to water the heck out of your mum you know, you don't need to be out there watering the heck out of your Japanese maple at the same time. So just be conscious of that a lot of other plants in your garden can trick you. You'll be wanting to do the same thing to your Japanese maple during this time frame. You know, you're, you're cutting things back, you're watering. There's so many things to do in the garden. Stick to the things that work for Japanese maples. And these are tried and true things that will give you your best success. You don't have to treat Japanese maples like every other plant in your garden. You might be cutting back your hydrangeas. You might be doing your cutback shrubs during this time. You might be watering the heck out of the mums. You might be, you know, moving things around. Stick to February for moving around. Wait till they're completely dormant. Don't transplant your Japanese maples just yet. Let them shut down. Don't do it while they're active. Let them get a little bit more hardened off for the winter. You'll get your best success if you follow these tips. And you're not treating Japanese maples like everything else in the garden. So Japanese maples and the fall, they just go together. I mean, the fall color is one of the best of any plants once it's established out in the landscape. 
It's one of my favorite times to go out to a garden and see Japanese maples in the landscape is during the autumn time frame. And that's simply because they're just so darn beautiful. Yeah, I remember going to like Kyoto and just amazing fall color in Kyoto. The Western uh, North Carolina mountains are definitely known for their fall color. And it's one of those ever-changing beauties. I mean, if you're in an area that gets a lot of great fall color, think about Japanese maples. They're just going to add to your landscape. They're going to make everything more beautiful. And uh, don't, you know, be, have realistic expectations. I think that's a lot of what this checklist is about. You know, don't expect in, in perfect fall color on a young tree the first year. Follow these steps. It'll give you the best success for as your tree gets established, it gets mature to have the very best fall possible. And that's our goal is we want you to be successful with Japanese maples because we sell Japanese maples. And the more that you are successful with it, the more Japanese maples you're going to have for your garden. So, guys, if you enjoy this podcast, definitely leave us a Google review sometime. We love those five-star reviews on Google. We love five-star reviews on podcasts as well. And you can always check this podcast out on YouTube on Sunday evenings. We rare video component to that. So, if you want to hop in that live chat, that Maple Mafia is ruckus. Those guys are a lot of fun. There's always a lot of great comments. We also have a wonderful community on Facebook. So go join our Facebook group. It's Mr. Maple Friends. That's a great way to get involved in the conversation, share pictures of your gardens. We would love to see what they're looking like this fall. Drop some of those dope fall color photos in our group and uh, you'll get a lot of good comments because everybody in there is Japanese maple crazy and they love to see what everybody else's plants are looking like. Yeah, I just love the community there. I mean, if, if I want to just have a time to geek out and tree geek out, I go to the Mr. Maple Friends group and it's just so many fun. It's so fun to go there and see people's trees and their gardens and see what they think is looking good at this time. All right. So take care, y'all. God bless and have a great day. 